I'm Sarah Middleton I'm from the DPC. Welcome to the next in uh, our short series of programmes, introducing our Digital Preservation Awards finalists, reminding you of their inspiring work before we reveal the winners this Thursday, World Digital Preservation Day at 12 o'clock UK time. Uh, each episode we're going to be taking a look at one of the awards categories in turn, and the exciting work, the incredible people, the hard work that's gone into uh, the projects that were selected as the finalists for each. Today we're going to be looking at the National Records of Scotland Award for the Most Distinguished Student Work. And I'm joined today by Susan Corrigal and Sharon McMeekin. Hello, I'm Susan Corrigal and I'm Head of Preservation at the National Records of Scotland. Hi, I'm Sharon McMeekin, Head of Workforce Development with the Digital Preservation Coalition. Susan, uh, the National Records of Scotland has sponsored this award and, and as such, uh, because you are the, uh, uh, the vice chair of this category. Could you say a few words about why it was so important for your organisation to support the award? Yes, absolutely. I think this is the second time that the National Records of Scotland has sponsored the student award. And we were particularly attracted to sponsoring the student award because it's very important to us as a national archive with a national leadership role to support student work and to support the whole student agenda and to be bringing people through into the profession and into employment. And we're absolutely thrilled to be sponsoring this award today. Sharon, can you remind us about the criteria for this awards category? What were the judges looking for when they selected their finalists? Well, the award for the most distinguished student work in digital preservation celebrates impressive work by any student, which lowers the barriers to digital preservation. It's presented to the student that, in the eyes of the judges, has produced an essay, coursework, project report or dissertation that has had, or potentially will have, the greatest contribution in securing our digital legacy. Um, we do, however, note that doctoral level studies which demonstrate original research would normally be submitted to the research and innovation category. So largely at this, for this category, we're looking at those working at a master's level. Thank you. And uh, we're going to hear a little bit more about each of the finalists in this awards category. Now, would you like to introduce them for us? Uh, yes. Um, so we have Andrew Davidson with Fraser Borough on film. Um, so yeah, Fraserburgh on Film is a community archive of moving image uh, that I created as a dissertation project at Robert Gordon University. Uh, it features moving image and film shot uh, by people of Fraserburgh, uh, which is a town in the northeast of Scotland uh, throughout the 20th century. Um, I've got an affinity with the area, I was born and brought up there, so I appreciate the language and traditions and cultures. Uh, the idea was to look at the digital preservation of film, but also the ways in which that can be used uh, to engage with people uh, through looking at digital um, storytelling and participatory heritage. And it could kind of re uh, foster a sense of place and a shared ownership of our heritage. Um, I've actually made a little video because I thought instead of me talking about it, it would show you kind of some of the stuff that I've done, uh, some of the contributions I got from the community and some of the films that are available in the, uh, in the project. I spent all of my, my, my childhood days uh, at the shore. When I came to the day it was 31st, I couldn't net a loop.
have Badr al-Rabi with the maturity level of digital preservation in the Sultanate of Oman's institutions, a comparative study. I am Badr al-Rabi and I'm going to briefly talk about my research, the majority level of digital preservation in Sultanate of Oman's institutions, a comparative study. So, the preparation to meet the challenges of digital preservation cannot be predicted in society that has recently demonstrated interest in preserving digital heritage. The sense about the digital preservation risk has not reached yet the level to manage them professionally. Developments in the technology sector in such country may not be indication to the majority level of, dig of digital preservation practice. In the Sultanate of Oman, a few studies have been published on the digitization project. To date, long-term digital preservation practice in the country have not been scrutinized by any academic study. Digital preservation activities in my country are not new, but before this study, individual initiative cannot be placed within a community framework of professional practitioners. The main aim of my research is to explore the reality of digital preservation activities in three Omani institutions before comparing between them using the NDSA level of digital preservation as a tool that guides the research to measure the majority level at five areas of activities, storage, geographic location, file fixity and data integrity, information security, metadata and file formats, making possible solutions to improve the current situation and drive the efficiency of digital preservation functions. As the study aims to identify the national level of majority, comparative case studies of several national cultural organizations was overseas. As these tend to be the first adopters of digital preservation techniques, the NDSA levels was an appropriate, appropriate benchmarking tool as it has been specifically developed to enable a quick Effective and visual understanding of technical majority in digital preservation, lending itself to comparison between organizations. The importance of this research is that it's the only study of the Omani practice in, dig in digital preservation. It reflects reality by researching and comparing actual experience nationally, enabling improvements to be made through comparison between organizations with similar cultural aims and objectives and good practice internationally. The construction of NDSA levels benchmark rates enable the central organizations to understand how they are performing individually and in comparison to each other, while the recommendation proposed provide a roadmap for developing digital preservation implementation across these organizations, conducting evaluation by widely used assessment tool may, may open the way for other experience to evaluate their projects. Such tools help participants to combine local practice with the external experience. It was necessary to know the reality of the digital preservation activities in my country and where our institutions stand. Through the recommendations, the need for more integrating with the digital preservation community was emphasized to improve performance and adopt common best practice. The Sultanate of Oman is systemically developing its cultural heritage and record functions, training new staff and introducing new systems. Identifying the nation current majority for digital preservation and the roadmap for future improvement will feed into this overall development plan. This research could also sow the seeds for cross-organizational collaborations at a national level. Thank you. Third, we have Lottie Wiesman with 
the significant properties of spreadsheets as stakeholder analysis. Uh, my name is Lot Weisman, and today I will be talking about my research concerning the significant properties of spreadsheets for stakeholder analysis. So spreadsheets are reliant on software that can become obsolete. And when this materializes, the file must be converted to another format. But when we convert an Excel file to a PDF, for instance, a loss of information occurs. An example of this is um, we can see the outcome of the formula, but not the formula itself anymore, which is, of course, not very useful to us anymore then. By researching what the significant properties of spreadsheets are, we can find a file format that is best suited to ensure a maximum retention of significant properties. And as stated by Adam Farquhar and Angela Deppard, significance lies in the eye of the stakeholder. This study aimed to, to form the addition to the objects analysis performed by the Open Preservation Foundation Archives Interest Group. A framework was developed on how to assess what properties stakeholders deem to, deem to be significant. But since there was no clear cut methodology on how to conduct a stakeholder analysis concerning these significant properties, a custom methodology was created in this study. It combined qualitative methods, such as introductory questions, the creation of a catalog with property groups, and interviews with also quantitative methods, such as statistical analysis and the use of the spreadsheet complexity analyzer tool. It provides, this study, it provides a methodology and toolbox that can be used internationally. And furthermore, using the statistical analysis, we can see patterns. For example, stakeholders with more knowledge tend to use more dynamic functionalities in, it, for instance, Excel, such as formulas and pivot tables. And of course, if they use it, they are much more inclined to also deem the, these property groups to be significant. But the study also shows that objective criteria of a spreadsheet is a strong prediction for significant properties. And using the spreadsheet complexity analyzer, we can assess spreadsheets on face value. We can look at the components that are actually used in a specific spreadsheet to determine what is of importance and must therefore be preserved. And then we can select formats to fit different profiles. And looking at face value is also a quick and accurate prediction of preservation intent. Um, it was very short, but I want to thank you for listening. And if you see the slide on the bottom right, it's also a link to my paper. So if you're interested, you can uh, read more. Thank you. Wow, uh, that was an impressive set of finalists, wasn't it? So you were both involved in the judging process for this category. Can you tell me a bit about how you found it, how, how you made your decision? I think it's always a tough decision and it's always really interesting to kind of read the pieces of work that we get um, submitted for this award. This year in particular, I love the diversity of the finalists, both in terms of the projects they undertook and the communities of practice they represent. I really am constantly impressed by the innov innovation and quality we see in the dissertations from the finalists in this category. And perhaps even a little bit intimidated by them. It's really kind of inspiring the work that they do. I, I really like the, the geographical diversity and the diversity of perspective that there were in the dissertations as well. We had a a very, very local project with Fraserburgh on film. And then we had a, a national level dissertation uh, reflecting on the Sultanate of Oman. And then we had a very detailed technical dissertation with uh, which worked collaboratively with the National Archives in the Netherlands. And that was a really, really nice contrast, which made the judge's job that bit harder. But we're very excited to be uh, revealing the winner of this awards category on Thursday, World Digital Preservation Day, 5th of November at 12 noon UK time. So thank you finalists, thank you judges um, and uh, digital preservation community. You can watch live on the DPC website at dpconline.org forward slash events forward slash digital hyphen preservation hyphen awards. So we look forward to seeing you all then. Thank you.